Greetings Exiles, Bullshifter here, back with another Path of Exile PS4 Beginner's Guide. Today I'm going to be covering efficiently running monoliths in Legion League. Now these are my top 5 ways to efficiently run, and we'll go ahead and start off with number 5. So once you see a monolith pop up, the very first thing you're going to want to do is actually clear the area out of normal enemies. Now the reason for this is you don't want normal enemies getting in your way when you are trying to unfreeze enemies in the monolith. The monoliths are relatively straightforward in the fact that you're going to go ahead and hit enemies that are frozen within a battlefield and unfreeze them. Once the timer runs out, they will become completely unfrozen, start attacking you, and you'll gain rewards and experience based off of how many you defeat and if they had any sort of special icons above their heads. So after you've gone ahead and cleared out the area, a few more things you want to pay attention to, and this is going to be my number four tip, is your character's movement speed. Obviously, movement speed is going to help you move through the area quicker and make it so that you can defeat more enemies. The biggest source of your movement speed is typically going to be your boots. Boots can gain to up to about 30% movement speed. There are certain uniques that will be capped at certain amounts. As you can see, mine are capped at 15%. However, there are other items you can gain movement speed from as well. If you do have a shield on your build, shields will sometimes have movement speed attached to them. And one of the other best ways to gain some extra movement speed are your flasks. You can carry a Quicksilver Flask, which will give you 40% increased movement speed off of your base movement speed. It will last 4 seconds, so typically you're going to be able to trigger that twice. So you'll be able to go ahead and pop one right as the monolith is starting, and 4 seconds after that countdown timer starts. I'm also going to be using a Silver Flask, which will give me Onslaught. And Onslaught is going to increase our movement speed as well as our attack speed. Attack speed is also going to be useful for anyone using any sort of physical attacks as opposed to spells because of the fact that you are going to get more attacks in and therefore do more damage. My number three tip is to make sure you have a good movement skill equipped. Movement skills are going to be important because say for example where this tree is right here, Say we trigger this monolith and we see an enemy with an icon above their head over at that tree. As opposed to attacking all the way through it, we can use our movement skill, be there instantly, and start attacking right away. We're only going to get a few seconds, so we really need to maximize what we're able to do within those few seconds while we're unlocking these enemies or unfreezing them. My number two tip is going to be to make sure you have a good AoE attack equipped. Uh, single target attacks are not going to be very useful when unlocking the monolith. Simply because of the fact that we don't want to be attacking one enemy at a time, we want to be able to hit multiple at a time, so that way we are unfreezing multiple targets as we move through the battlefield. Now my last tip is a bit convoluted and it kind of incorporates a few different ideas into one tip. However, my biggest and number one tip is going to be to evaluate the battlefield as soon as you activate your monolith. Typically, yes, you are going to want to unfreeze those enemies with icons above their head because typically they will yield the greatest rewards. However, you don't want to waste your time in the monolith. So if I go ahead and unlock the monolith and a battlefield pops up and I don't see any enemies whatsoever with icons above their heads, it's not a bad idea to just go through and actually hit a few enemies, unfreeze them as I move through the battlefield until I actually find one with some of those icons above their heads. Now when I do get to the point when I do find some enemies with those icons above their heads, if they are, say, a rare enemy or an enemy that has gold text above their heads, if it's taking me too long to unfreeze that enemy, too long to take that health bar down, I'm better off going through the battlefield and actually attacking other enemies as opposed to wasting every single second I have in the monolith on that one reward. Because of the fact that common enemies can still drop things in the monoliths, I have gotten incubators from enemies that didn't have icons above their heads. Obviously, the more enemies you unfreeze, the greater chance you have it drops, and also the more experience you're going to get while running the monoliths. You're always going to be doing well. If you're attacking larger mobs, it's going to grant you more experience. So you kind of have to balance it out, know what kind of damage output you have, and think of clever ways to do damage as well. So say I can do decent damage to one of those gold or rare enemies, but I'm still wasting majority of my time on that one enemy. One thing I can do if I have minions, or in my case, 
totems that I'm able to use is say there's an enemy, a gold one, by this tree right here. I can start attacking it with my melee AoE. And, well, it didn't quite drop where I wanted it to, which is some of the problems you may have. But if I drop my Ancestral Warchief there, my totem is actually going to attack that enemy as well. So I can ideally drop him down to a quarter of his health with my attacks, pop my Ancestral Warchief, or pop it at the beginning so it's helping me do damage, attack, and once he's down to about a quarter health, get out of there and keep attacking more enemies. You'll kind of know what to do with your specific build and character the more monoliths that you run. So with those five tips being said, let's go ahead and activate this monolith and see if we have any good luck. First thing I'm going to do here is actually take off my overhead map, just so that way I have a better view of the battlefield itself. Pop our flasks there, go ahead and attack some enemies, pop our flask again as it's been a few seconds. Unfortunately I haven't really seen any icons, there's one right there. As I mentioned earlier, so that's a rare. And we didn't quite get him in the amount of time just because we only had a few seconds left at the end there. But it does look like we still got an orb of fusing, so we did still get some currency. And we unlocked a decent little pack of monsters over there. So, kind of an unlucky one. Um, you will have those where you don't necessarily find a lot of uh, iconed enemies in the monolith itself. However, we did still maximize what we were able to do simply by the fact that we are still unfreezing enemies as we went along. We did increase our movement speed twice with the Quicksilver Flask, which was about as many times as we were going to get it within the 11 seconds. Um, we could have potentially popped it at the very begin, like just before we started the monolith, so that way a couple seconds would have ran off. We could have hit it again, you know, two or three seconds into the monolith starting, and then hopefully hit enough enemies so that we would have gained a few more charges to be able to hit it a third time once it closed up. Uh, but that's ideally how you're going to want to run your monoliths. You're going to want to hit quick, you're going to want to hit hard, and you're going to want to move through as fast as possible to unfreeze as many enemies as possible for as many rewards as possible. So I hope you found a few of these tips helpful. Uh, hopefully if you've been having some success in the monoliths, this will help you have even more success. And if you haven't been having much success at all, hopefully this will do the trick for you. So thanks again for watching this video. Again, I hope you do find it helpful. I will be streaming tonight directly on YouTube. So if you go ahead and make sure you are subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on, you'll be notified whenever I am streaming. So you can come on in, hang out, and just be a part of the stream. So until next time, may the RNG be with you, exiles. Always.